Hello, this is Rory from RateMyFuneral.com. That was Rate, by the way. Uh, today, going to do a tutorial. Um, I put a little preview video up the other week. Um, it was a uh, a thing for Portal. Uh, let me just quickly dig out the uh, the video, and we'll play that again. Um, basically, it came about because a friend of mine said um, he'd been watching Portal videos on YouTube and. and Kind of asked me if I could do that sort of thing, and then I got sort of wondering, could I do that in uh, in cinema? Because that would actually probably be pretty cool. Um, so I came up with uh, this little scene over here. You, there you go. You can see that. Um, and that's what we're now going to make. Um, maybe a cut down version because it did. It does take quite a while, but uh, I'll certainly take you through the basics of it. Um, but mainly there's a, a bunch of stuff in this that uh, allows you to um, that you can use for other things there, there's some some hopefully some really useful little bits and pieces that you've come up come across in this um, right okay uh, new setup we've got a, a nice new microphone um, so hopefully the audio is a little bit better my resolution should be a little bit better um, and uh, yeah let's jump on into cinema okay so we're going to start. Uh, I'm going to make the assumption that you have a basic knowledge of uh, cinema, um, and I'm just going to start off with a cube and make it about so big. I'm going to make it about three centimeters thick. There we go. So that's going to be our floor, uh, and then I'm going to make a copy of it. Press R to get the rotate. Hold Shift to move in increments, and move that to there. Uh, do the same thing again, make a copy of it, control C, control V, R to rotate, hold shift, and spacebar will take you back to the previous tool. And we'll place that one in there. Right, there's our little set. So that starts us off. A um, couple of little bits that I'm going to cover first before I go too far into this. So, uh, one of the drawbacks in the world of CG is that you're playing, in a, you're you're creating things in a completely empty space. Uh, when you see things in in reality, uh, you're seeing the reflections of everything. So we need to create something to, uh, you know, give it a bit more, you know, depth and give everything a, a you know, a, a reflection of something around it. So the way we're going to do that is just up here. We're going to do sky. And then what you want is uh, an HDR image. You can Google HDR image and find plenty. Careful of copyright and that sort of thing on that, though. Um, basically, it's a panoramic scene. Uh, so I've got a couple here. I'm just going to use this one here. Um, now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can create a new texture by double clicking down here, and then you assign the image to that. Or just drag that in like that, and it'll automatically assign it to the color channel. See? Uh, and then we'll put that on our sky. Now that's given us something around. Um, if I just, I'll show you the difference. If I just create a sphere in the middle here, look, uh, create a new texture and just give it full reflectivity. And place that in the middle uh, and render that out. You can now see that that's reflecting everything around it. Because I've got no shadows or anything, it's kind of hard to see the edges. Um, I'll just turn on. Uh, ambient occlusion that'll help us just see uh, sort of uh, do, 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 do. perhaps if we rotate the sky we can make that see we can do that uh, do, do. yeah and you can see what's there if I just turn if I just turn off the sky a second um, click in these little buttons if you uh, if you hold alt it just does both basically just quickly uh, the top button uh, when it's green it means show, when it's red it means hide. Um, the top one is hide in uh, render uh, window, uh, in the editor window. The second one is hide in the render. So if you have it just there like that you'll still see it because it's showing in the in the render but then when, oh, sorry in the editor but then when you render it it's not there when it comes out but now it's, if you notice it's not being reflected anymore. So this leads us on to our next point, which if you want the uh, the sky to be there, but you don't want the uh, see, you can see it here. There are some cases where you do want that, but there's other cases where you don't want to see that. 
So basically just right click Cinema 4D tags and do compositing. With this tag you can turn off various attributes. Uh, we're going to turn off scene by camera. And then now we can uh, render that out and you can see we've got a reflection and that's all fine. So a little bit on that. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to do a texture for these walls just so that it makes them look a little bit nicer. So color slightly off white, uh, a bit of reflection and do a for now and just turn that down a bit and turn the specular off because we don't need that because we're using reflection and we just put that onto each of the walls and then when we look at that there's our little scene excellent right so I'm just gonna move these up a bit um, something that it's a very good idea to do is name things especially when you're working with something as complicated as trying to create a portal scene so I'm gonna start by naming that one the floor I'm gonna name this one the right wall and I'm going to name this one the left wall. Okay. Um, I need to create a couple of circles in the floor. So I'm going to start do this with like this. This is a cylinder. So we use the cylinder primitive object. Um, we want something thicker than the floor. So something like five. Oh, no, there's no point being tight with it. We might as well go eight. Um, and we're going to make that a bit bigger. Um, the here's an here's a point. Okay, so you can choose the scale tool. If you click anywhere on the screen with the scale tool selected and your object selected, you'll scale it like so. All right. Now, if you want to scale just a particular part, you can't do that with the uh, pr the primitive objects before they're made editable, because it kind of keeps its aspect ratio. Um, so basically, what you have to do is press C on the object to make it editable and then you can grab that handle and just squish that in a bit. And that will give us our our hole. It's a little big so I'm just going to shrink that down just a bit and I'm going to stick that in the wall. Okay. I'm just going to make that uh, a little bit longer as well. Cool. Okay. So that's going to be one of our holes and we want one more which will be the other one and we'll put that in the floor okay so the this one we will call the wall hole this one we'll call the floor hole put this guy down the bottom so it's out of the way right excellent now the way this is going to work is that these are actually going to uh, we're going to use them to cut the hole out um, so in order to do this uh, I think maybe now though we'll move on to our little man let's let's make our little man under uh, oh, I didn't mean to create a cube under our primitives here there's a figure and there's our little dude there and he's a little bit big and his arms <coughs> are kind of they're out a bit, so somehow I'm not sure he's going to get through these holes. So we need to put his arms down. Now the, you don't have much in the way of options with it when this isn't editable. Um, you can shrink him down a bit so he's a bit closer to the real size, the size we're going to want, which is something about there. Um, so what I'm going to do? Uh, oh, let me just—if you go to display, put on lines, you can see the lines. I'm just wondering whether we need whether he's got too many segments because we don't really need him quite so detailed, but. Mm. Let's just take him down just a bit. If we go down to ten, let's just have a look. Yeah, for this, that'll do. Um, okay. Uh, so now, with our figure, we want to put his arms down. So the way I do this is, I make it editable. Go into the, uh, the hierarchy, and you'll see his upper body, and you've got arm there. Press R and you can rotate the arm down like so and just rotate it around a bit. And do the same with the other one. There we go. Like that. <coughs> cool. Um, just to make this a little uh, easier to work with, I'm just going to 
expand all of these because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click control and then highlight all of the 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 uh the top level parts of this so anything that's got a, a minus next to it basically I'm going to just keep control held and highlight those uh, and now right click and do expand object group like that there we go and that basically puts everything out and then going to highlight them all that's all of our, the bits of our man right click and do connect and delete there we go that gives us just uh, like a one object so everything's all together that just makes it a little bit easier when we're doing our dynamics which we will do now so our floor and our wall and the other wall we're going to make those a collider body so right click simulation collider body there we go uh, and then with those selected go to collision and under shape you want to set that to static mesh you must do that because without that it will the holes won't appear in the dynamic system so we need that we also want to do the figure and set him uh, rigid body and set him to moving mesh because we want him as a mesh but we want him to be able to move um, I always do this oh, is set the friction up to about a hundred or so because by default the friction is really low and uh, it kind of makes everything a bit ice rinky ice rinky so figure so uh, if we press play in theory he falls down and falls over cool right we're going to want a few more frames to play with so I'll just tap in a bigger number there and drag that out a bit I don't know if that's really necessary let's go for 250 it's not going mad right Oosh. cool that's him working now if you were really good you could uh, set up a rig for him and um, give him ragdoll type physics um, there are a bunch in the content browser there are a bunch of like pre-done rigs for doing that sort of thing I don't really get it um, it's really very complicated so I'm not going to be worried about that right now I'm more worried about playing with the portals type stuff <coughs> anyway so back to the dynamics our figure we want him sitting on the floor so I'm just gonna put him near the floor and press play there we go he's now standing on the floor so we're gonna to go to the tag we go to dynamics and then do set initial state that's him now standing on the floor we've also got him right in the middle of our what's gonna be our hole <laughs> cool okay so next thing we're going to do is um, let's add uh, what do we want to do? I'm not, I'm not even sure now. Ah, let's make let's make the holes appear. We'll do that. Okay, so let's start um, with the wall hole. Uh, because technically, right, even though you shoot the floor first, the the hole doesn't actually open until you shoot the second uh, until you shoot the second hole. So it's the the second hole once that appears that matters to us. If that makes sense, this gets really confusing dealing with this kind of extra dimension stuff it's a bit crazy right the way we're going to do it go to with the ball hole selected we're going to go to this one here and go to ball hold down alt and then release on ball and that will automatically just put the wall as a child of the ball we then want to add the left wall to the ball as well so basically whatever is underneath will cut a hole in what's above and you can see that's done that there um, so we now have a hole in our wall excellent just what we want so that's fine um, we will do the same with the other one as well so floor hole cut a hole hold alt there we go and put the floor into there there we go now something that you do need to do here because if I just press play the hole hasn't taken effect and that's because our tag is on the wall so we actually want to put the the one from the wall onto the ball and the one from the floor onto the ball and then now our little guy will fall through super okay uh, the next thing we're going to do um, is uh, kinda make a uh, 
make the holes appear. Now I'm just going to take a copy of the uh, the wall hole first and just leave that up there and just hide that for the minute and the same with the floor hole. Control C, Control V and then just hide that. We're going to want them in a minute so um, that's fine. So let's start with the wall hole. So let's say at frame 50 um, no, let's say at frame 60 we want the hole to be full size. So we select the hole, go to coordinates and set a keyframe for the scale so that it's on one. Then jump back to frame 50 and set the, key the scale to zero. Do, do, do. Set a keyframe for each of those. Hold down control and click on this little dot to set a keyframe by the way. And now when you look at this you can see that one opens up. So that's brilliant. That's just what we want. And for the floor hole, we're going to do the same thing um, at around about the same time, uh, I imagine. So at 60, set a keyframe at full. And then at 50, set it all to zero and set a keyframe. Rewind to the beginning. And then you'll see at frame 50, cool. Perfect. Now, because uh, because I uh, there might well be a way in cinema to make him kind of pass through there and come out over here. I've not found that. I don't know if this is the case. So I've come up with another way of doing it, as is the way with all of this sort of thing. There is no correct way of doing anything. There are better practice ways of doing things, but there's no actual official, this is the way you have to do this. It's always a case of you do it how you can achieve it. As long as it achieves it, then that's great. This is how I'm going to achieve it. I'm going to create a second figure, Control C, Control V, and I'm going to turn him onto his side. Okay, uh, let's skip to here so we can see it. Right. Uh, now we can't move them unless we're on the first one so I'm just going to turn these back on so we can see where we're looking go to the multi view and line him up so that he is there um, something I am going to do here is grab that that figure and the floor hole I'm just going to move them back a bit because I don't want him to fly through this one and fall straight through the hole again because that will kind of ruin the effect. If you can do that, then you can create a dross type thing. That's actually really cool. But again, you'd need to know how to do it the proper way, which I'm not sure about. So anyway, so I'm going to stick him through there. At position 50... 50 let's go to 50. No, rewind back. We're going to have to work this out a little bit. Basically, let me show you this. Okay, so if we just press play, he falls. We don't want that to happen. So we set this figure to dynamic off, and then there, he won't fall now. When that one starts to fall, at this point here, we want the uh, we want our one to start traveling in. So the way we're going to do that is with a custom initial velocity. Uh, and that's green going up, so that's Z. So we want to do minus in the middle one here, um, something like minus 500. Uh, actually, if we make it minus 600, okay, and then um, at 59, we set a keyframe for the dynamic, and then at 60, we turn it on. So that means at frame 60, he's going to be shot forward. So let's try that. Cool. Now he's acting a bit funny. Now the reason for that is the uh, the old dynamics thing. If you press Control D um, and then go to Dynamics and then Expert, you'll see here steps per frame. That's quite low by default. Put that up to about 25, and uh, you should see. There you go. He acts a bit more realistically. Now he's not quite jumping in as far as I would like, so I'm just going to up that to 800. Now I'm just going to check the timing this time. So basically, it's when he's about halfway, All right? So his when his groin <laughs> is level with the the wall, his chest is. So they're not quite in time. 
but one of the problems I think is actually gravity because gravity is a little slow again gravity is a little slow by default um, so I'm just going to set the gravity mm, set the gravity up let's increment like that I'll try that You know what, you could probably get away with it, but I'll just set it to 18 and see what that looks like. Hmm. I think maybe we need to find a combination. So let's go with that, and also we're going to put the time scale up a bit to 130. Well, that's broken it completely. What's happened now? Um, why has that done that? Let's just turn these off a minute. This figure is this figure here. Um, I don't know if this is. Yeah, he should be falling through there. Uh, clear initial state. Let's just raise him up a bit and see if he falls. Yeah, okay. Bit weird. So I'll put him on the floor, set initial state, and we'll try that again. Okay, so. Let's just set that back to 100. I don't understand that. If anyone can tell me the reason behind that. <laughs> I'll be very grateful. Um, just set this to 101. Let's just see if that. How bizarre! Right. I don't know what that is. I'm just going to go with this. It's it's pretty damn close. You know, you've got to be pretty picky to be worrying about that. Okay, that's cool. So we've got the essentials of what's going on now. We might want to make our set a little bigger, actually, but no, we should be okay. Um, I'm just going to make a quick wood texture just to put on our guy. Uh, I'm not going to spend any real time over it, but go to color, texture, noise, uh, and then relative scale, set the middle one up quite high. That gives you some funky lines. Uh, set those ones down a bit. There we go. And the black, we want to be a kind of dark brown something like that and then the white maybe like somewhere there it's just kind of a bit of wood then give it a little bit of reflection as if it's been polished for now turn that specular off there we go and apply that to our man and we'll also apply that to the the other one as well. Cool. Okay. Right. Where are we at then? So we've made our little scene. We've got our guys falling through the floor. That's cool. Um. Here's an here's the little bit. So. With uh, in the portal game, you have um, in this area here. You should actually see what's through here, and in this area here, you should see what's through there. Uh, I, I messed around with some different ways of doing this. Uh, I first of all, I tried uh, putting a camera there and rendering it out, and then applying that as a texture, and that was just stupid. And I was starting to think that this is going to be impossible, but then I found a very, very cool feature. Um, if you go to create a new texture, and then under the color mode, go to texture there, and MoGraph camera shader. And it turns out, basically, if you assign a camera to this, whatever that camera is looking at will be on the texture. So that's perfect. So all we have to do is put a couple of cameras in the areas. So I did it like this. Um, I create uh, we've made our extra ones that's why we did this you see 
and we don't want them quite as thick as that so we're going to make them a little little smaller uh, and the same with this one here cool okay and we're going to do a couple of things firstly we're going to have the wibble around the edge now this is the the, the thing that I wanted to do a bit different I'm not going to I'm going to do this in a very haphazard way what I'd like is if you were to, if you are making a you know following this tutorial and building this I want you to have a play and see if you can work out how to make nice fiery looking uh, a surround um, I think that that would do you good uh, to sort of have a play I'm just going to use these ones I made in Photoshop so it's they're PNGs I'll drag them down to add them uh, like this there we go look you see, you see that um, what you have to do is go to the alpha channel turn on alpha and then just from bitmaps just select the blue one there we go and then from here alpha and select the orange one there we go so now that gives us our rings but obviously that looks a bit poop compared so if I just place the orange one on the floor hole and the blue one on the wall hole that does look a bit naff doesn't it <laughs> so yeah so I'd like to uh, see you uh, come up with something a bit better for that but that's all I'm going to do for this um, but next I'm going to use my camera thing now this is where you have to be a little careful because this gets really confusing let's create a camera and we're going to make it a 15 mil wide camera something like that and if I put it inside of the floor hole I can then select the floor hole come down to here and I can zero all of these out did I select oh sorry I did that completely wrong I select the camera and I zeroed it out and because it's a child of the camera that's a child of the floor the camera is now in in the middle of this floor hole so that's cool and we zero those ones as well there we go uh, we just need to move the camera so that it's facing upwards uh, we're actually inside um, the little man at the moment so let's do this oh, where where are we so it's 90 degrees let's just turn the figure off for a minute so we can see what we're looking at We're in the middle of that. There we go. Right. Right. I think we need to put him there. I'm not completely sure. I need to check this, but that's fine. So that's one. Uh, we then create another camera, and we put that in the wall hole one. Okay, and we'll zero that out like that, and we can see that that camera is looking the wrong way. So we can turn that that way, so 90 degrees, and then we need to turn that up as well. Otherwise, the image will probably be upside down. Uh, I've made a mistake here sorry about that when I added that camera I was in that top view so it makes it that type of camera so this is much easier just to uh, make sure you're in the main view create a new camera make it uh, super wide place it in the wall hole and zero it out there you go you can see it's appeared in there it's cool um, and change its rotation so we want 90 in that one and so it's not on its side look there we go minus 90 in that one um, and we'll just hop into that camera and just move it back a bit I think I think it needs to sit like that I'm not 100% sure we might need to adjust them slightly but right so let's go back to 
Uh, let's create a main camera. That will be something like that. Ah, see, I've done it again. Oh, it's def it's selected that top view. Let's see. Get rid of that a minute, and then create your camera. It's very frustrating. Right. Okay. Uh, we can turn our figure back on as well. Let's name this camera. Floor camera and wall camera. Right. So we have our cameras. Now it's not going to work with them on the other side. Or is it? Is it? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm really not sure. We'll find out. Okay, let's create this one first. So color, we've got camera shader in there and we're going to do the floor into this one, which means that this is the wall. Okay. Does that make sense? So when I put that onto the wall hole, it's reflecting everything the floor sees. Let's make a copy of that and call this one floor. Go to the camera shader and then we put the wall camera in there. We assign that one to the floor hole. So everything, the, the, the image in there is everything seen over there. Now, I don't think this is going to work because, yeah, that's what I thought, because the cameras are behind. So we're just going to uh, hop into this view, see? So that's all they're seeing. So we move this camera forward to about there, should do it. And then if we hop into this camera as well, we can do this one as well. So we raise him up. So we're in between his legs. <laughs> right, and then go back to our main camera. Right, so now if we have a look, oh, sorry, do that, do this one. There you go. So now you can see what's through there and what's through there. That's cool. Uh, now, something you'll notice, our rings have vanished, and that's just because it's in the wrong position. So we just drag those past there, and now when you look at that, it's got those, those funky little rings around them. So that's our mirror system set up. So that's great. We just need to get some um, timing, because we don't want it always there. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to take these cameras out because you don't really want to be scaling cameras because that gets confusing. Um, so the wall hole and the floor hole, we want to sort of follow our, our other one. So we start at 50 and make them all zero. Set a keyframe. Then go to 60. And do all the ones and set a keyframe. And there we go. That's cool. So what should be happening is we get our portals opening like that and he falls through. And if at any time we do that, and there we go. That's about right. The only reason that's coming up black is there's, it's probably either that he's in the middle of the camera or there's just nothing it's reflecting. I imagine he's just in the middle of the camera. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So that's that bit done. So that's quite a handy technique. The, the camera mapping thing um, can definitely come in really, really handy. Right. So we have all of that done. The next bit we want to do is sort of add a bit of movement and the gun. Now the gun I actually downloaded, um, you could make one, um, but I found if you go to Google and type in Portal 3 Gun 3D Model, you should find this from the uh, the free 3 dmodelscom um, and this is really a, a really smart little model, I really like this. So I've downloaded that and what you do is just uh, go to the folder where you download it from and there's an OBJ file just drag that into cinema there just OK that and there's your thing now it comes textured but they're all white so that's not really much good to us so now the way I did this was um, I deleted the texture 
and saw that it left that one free so I was thinking what's that going to be so you can get this picture up and sort of just have a look so you're going to be looking at white, uh, whites, blacks up there sort of blacks in there and then blue in, in the middle and glass so okay we can deal with that we can do this pretty quickly so I'll create a new texture and this is going to be our white so we make it almost white a little bit reflective a bit of Fresnel uh, just reduce the reflection down a bit reduce the Fresnel down a bit and turn the specular off there we go so that's the white done obviously how good this looks depends on how much time you spend on it but I'm not going to worry too much so back shell we're going to use the same texture I think uh, back cuts that's the bit across the top so I'm just going to make a copy of our first texture and just change the color to just off black like that there we go cool um, uh, the back holes oh that's these here so I'll make another copy of our texture and I'm just gonna bring that up a bit so it's a bit grayer like so there we go uh, front core let's see what that is I'm gonna make that black right uh, back core that's the well that's all of that so that's black as well the arms they'll be black the pins uh, we'll make those the grey uh, tubes uh, this is the bit in the middle so we want a glass texture for this so um, <clears throat> let's just make a copy of our black texture there and do uh, d -d 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 transparency <clears throat> and make it just off transparent it doesn't you don't want it completely transparent like so and just turn the reflection brightness up a bit because that would be quite reflective uh, and the color just going to put a little bit lighter color there we go maybe not quite that much sort of about there there we go and we'll assign that to the tube uh, the rings um, I think this I, I want make a copy of our black and we'll just make that blue make a nice little light blue should look pretty groovy uh, yeah look at that um, glow we'll make a copy of this one and we'll do the luminance channel turn off the color channel and we'll make that a kind of blue a bit like the one we just did uh, yeah that'll do um, that's fine put on the glow the wires they can be black and the handle that can be black so there we go really quickly just texted that out that looks pretty smart now <clears throat> alright just to keep this tidy I'm gonna select it all right click and do connect and delete and call this portal gun sorted right control C and we'll go back to our other window control V now we can see it it's a little large, um, but because I, we've got our sky object, the reflections are showing up nicely on it. Now it looks pretty groovy. And this is where there's no lighting or anything. This is only ambient occlusion. And that looks pretty cool. Ah, right. So let's see. We need to basically our main camera. We need to put inside this thing. Uh, I'm just going to shrink it down a bit. That was T and rotate it round so it's facing the scene and pull it back a bit something like that now I'm going to uh, let's just get this looking about right if you were holding it it would probably look something like that I guess and if we now place this camera underneath the gun now watch if we move the gun around see it's kind of like doom cool yeah <laughs> okay so that's step one that gives us a gun and a camera 
what we want is an easier way of moving it around and making it look a bit more fluid so we're going to use a null object null there we go now a null object is basically just an object with no geometry it's just a position in position in space and then that object uh, is going to become our target so we highlight our portal gun and we go to cinema tags and we do target and then we just set the null as the target now what's happened here uh, is that if I just come out of the camera view basically that blue axis is pointing to the target so that means that essentially the gun to say that the gun is pointing at the target it's on its side so we need to change that so basically what we do is we with the gun selected we go to axis mode which is here and we just need to rotate that 90 degrees so that the uh, so that the uh, the axis is is pointing in the right way. Now though, you'll see that the camera is still spot on, so that's good. And we are looking at our null. If we now move this null around, there we go. See, we can now look around more fluidly. So that's much nicer. Um, we want to add a bit of wobble but we'll do that in a bit let's do a bit of animation of this null first so we're going to start off here um, so we go to the null and we set a keyframe for all of its positions um, I'm going to use the four screens just to make this a bit easier to see where our null is at any given time um, so let's skip forward to say frame 30. Uh, let's set a keyframe for each of the positions and then skip forward to frame say 38. Let's use that one and then we're just going to place that null onto the floor by our geezer. So we're saying that it's right so at frame 38 it's shot the set a keyframe at frame 38 it's shot the uh, portal underneath the little dude then ah right okay so at this point we're actually going to need to move where our floor hole expands you can see it's there so we'll just highlight these and we'll put that there because the ball object staying the same it's fine. It's looking a little confusing now, but oh, let's go to the proper view. So basically, the gun will look over there, shoot. There we go. Okay. So that's fine. So it shoots there, and then at this point here, we need to set our null keyframe at our null, go forward a few frames to just before this opens up and we need to move that null. So we point the null like this and like this and then up the wall there like that. Okay. So it's now shot the other one and go forward a few frames and just get the null back to the middle again and save the keyframes right so what's happening is it shoots the it moves down and shoots the first one bang then it looks up there shoots that one and there we go and the only thing I don't really like very much is the way that kind of goes up there and instantly moves across So I'm going to actually, at this point here, uh, can I 
I do this? Hold control. There you go. Hold control and drag the keyframe. There you go. And it just holds it there for a second. Right now, just to make it look. Oh, mind you, oh that's because I'm dragging it. I'm rabbiting. Sorry. Right. Here we go. So you shoot the floor. Bang. You shoot the wall. There we go. And that's right. Cool. Now, obviously, it doesn't look very fluid. So we're going to use a vibrate tag on the null. Uh, vibrate. We don't want it to come on. Basically, if you start the vibrate tag, if you just turn it on and set it every time you start, it's going to be a slightly funny. Uh, you'll get a slightly funny um, position thing. You'll get like a jump. So what we're going to do is actually start with it off, and then let's say frame four with enable position. Uh, so set a keyframe and then frame 5 enable position set the keyframe put about 100 on each <coughs> and then we'll have a look there we go so it's now sort of looking around shoots that one shoots that one and there we go it's maybe it's a bit fast so perhaps we'll reduce that to 0.5 see we are still getting that jump though look it's when that kicks in. Uh, it's when that kicks in. I think perhaps it's better to do it. Hang on, can I undo doing that? Right, so perhaps instead of instead of that, have that enabled. But have that at zero. Have that at 0 0.5, and then set a keyframe on the amplitude, and then at frame. I've go up to uh, let's go more than one frame. Let's say frame ten, go up to a hundred on each. We'll just see if that does it. There we go. Doesn't jump now. It's just it's just kind of moving around, so it's a bit more fluid. I think maybe I might make that a one. There we go. Cool. In my example, I went on and basically I repeated the whole lot again, but with some other holes. Um, I don't think you really need to worry about that right now. But what you've got here, you might need to make the set a bit bigger, but what you've got here is basically a little portal scene. Um, I added the, uh, the, the, the balls I added in um, After Effects. Uh, and all of that. Um, we could put some nice lighting onto it. I suppose we should just do some lighting. It's not a lighting tutorial, so I'm only going to use some basic area lights. So we'll have a nice, we'll have an overhead one. So that's up there, maybe. Um, set the area shadows on that. Uh, just come out of this camera mode a minute and. Uh, make a copy of that light, stick this one down here, angle it a bit, uh, set that one down, doesn't need to be quite so bright, um, color, we'll just give it a little bit of warmth from over here, and we'll have another one of those that we'll put over here, something like that. We'll set that one even less bright, and we'll just move that over to blue so it adds a bit of coolness in over that way. And we'll just see. Uh, yeah, so that's killing me render time. <laughs> but that looks pretty groovy. So there you go. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, you can add the extra bits. But yeah, what I'd love to see, if you can uh, come up with a better way of doing these bits around here, uh, make it and submit it onto the site. Um, that would be really nice. Uh, I'd love to see it. Don't forget to visit the site. Um, we can You can get there by going to www.ratemyfuneral.com And here you will find all of the stuff um, that I do. Uh, so you can join in a bit and come and have some fun uh, and there you go okay so cheers for that thanks for uh, listening I hope it wasn't too dreary and 
I shall see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.